Podcasts. I'm all in. What's up, everybody? We will start today's vlog playing at Golden Nuggets Poker Room, a place where there is an uncapped 1 2 no limit hold'em cash game. I heard a lot of this place and decided to come check it out. The line was pretty big, so while I was waiting, I decided to take a walk at Fremont Street Experience, which is side by side with Golden Nugget. Pretty awesome place to go if you're around Vegas. I just wouldn't advise you to take kids with you, because it's a pretty wild place as well. You can see some weird things around. I don't even know if kids are allowed. But yeah, great place to be in, and I highly recommend you to check this place out. I finally get called for my seat after around one hour and a half of waiting. Welcome to the Poker Profit channel, the first poker vlog created to help you become a better poker player. I'm the biggest stack at the table. The game is uncapped, I buy in for a thousand. First hand we're in the under the gun with king queen offsuit. I open raise to twelve dollars. Under the gun plus one, who is an elderly guy, which I don't have any extra information about. Re-raise to thirty dollars. Everybody else folds. Pretty small sizing. If he re-raises 3x, like 36, I will most likely fold, because King Queen is dominated by many hands on his 3 betting range. But as he 3 betted to 30, I believe it's okay to call and see a flop, and that's what I do. The flop comes King 5 3 Rainbow. I make top pair. I check, and I'll most likely call any bet. He bets 15. I'm still losing to Ace King, Aces, and Kings. I call. Turns a 7. Pretty much a blank. Doesn't change nothing. Besides 6-4 gets there, but I don't have 6-4 in my range, and he doesn't have it as well. I check again, he bets 35 now. I could decide to check raise, but I don't think it's a good option, because I would transform my hand into a bluff most likely, and he would only call with hands that are beating me. And there isn't too many cards that I don't like in the river besides the ace, especially because there are no flush draws in the board. So I call again, river comes a 4, now any 6 has a straight. I could have some sixes in my range, even though it would be rare. I check again. He checks back and shows ace king, also having top pair, top kicker. If I was in his spot, most likely I would decide to bet here, due to the reasons I told you that I don't have many sixes on my range. And I have a couple king queen, king jack, even tens jacks that I could find a hero call. And I'm glad he didn't bet, because most likely I would call for a bet here and he wins the hand. The floor of Golden Nuggets Poker Room, who was a really nice woman, came to me with a sad face, telling me that I wasn't able to record here. I really understand her. I know that are their rules, but honestly, I really think uh, Casino should reevaluate this rule, because usually the only people who have problem with that are the floor of the casinos. So she tells me I can't record, and I'm decided to not play in places that doesn't allow me to record, so I leave the table. She came to me afterwards and said, oh, you, you don't need to leave. And I understand her, uh, she was really polite to me, and I really have to make it clear that, because she was a really nice and polite floor, but unfortunately, if she doesn't allow me to record, I'm not gonna play, and I'm gonna leave to another place that allows me to record. Well guys, one more time, uh, they say I can't record it, and I leave, and in the end it's never the players, every time, like 99.9% .9 of the times, is the staff saying I can't record and that's so I feel that's so stupid you know like that's bad for them that's bad for me that's bad for you because you don't have content and in the end no one is complaining the only thing they're doing are respecting stupid rules and yeah uh, now I'm going I don't know if I'm going to Belage if I'm going to Resort World maybe I'm going to Resort World because they never bother me and they deserve me to stay there and to make content there and you guys uh, i hope you guys go there instead of here because man like this place doesn't deserve me to tell they are good you know like i'm not even talking only about this place but any place that is just short side you know they they don't understand that this market exists and like you guys 
are here for a reason, you know? And they just say, fuck it, and you can't record here. That's... I'm... I'm... I'm getting... I'm getting sick of it, you know? Like, that's so stupid. But, yeah, I'm going to Resolve World now, and let's see what happens. The game at Golden Nuggets was pretty lame as well. Not a lot of action going there. And 1-2 is a pretty cheap game. And I honestly rather the 1-3 at Resort World win Bellagio or 2-5 at those places other than 1-2 at the Golden Nuggets. And I decided to go to my favorite place in Vegas, which is Resort World. And that's where we're gonna finish today's session. I buy in for 400, which is the max at the 1-3. First hand, I get Pocket Kings in the big blind, cut off limps, I raise to 18, then cut off goes all in for 175. Great start for us, I call. The board is pretty good. He shows ace queen. I show the kings and we scoop the first hand. Next hand, I get three deuce suited from the big blind again. Button strata to six. I complete. Another limp goes to the hand. Button checks. Three players see the flop. I make bottom two pair in the flop. I decide to lead out for $11, hijack folds, and then the button re-raises to 35. Here, I have the option of calling or raising, and I think I decided for the worst option I had. I decided to call, but I believe most of the times I will be winning here, and I should raise, because even though I'm winning, my hand is pretty fragile against any type of top pair hand or flush draw, or even a ace five, ace four hand, which is a top pair and a gut shot, which those hands would have nine outs against me in position. So I decided to call, but I don't think that's the best option. Turn comes a pretty bad one. Now I'm losing to flush draws mostly. Ace Queen, I don't think he has so many in his range, because as a button straddler, he would raise if he had Ace Queen most likely. I check again. Now he bets $70, having like 300 behind. And now I think I made another mistake. I decided to fold, but I'm mostly losing to flushes. And if he had a flush, would he bet that big? I don't think so. I was kind of tilted this night. But now reevaluating the hand, I really think I should either call or even raise here to protect my equity over one card clubs or even a pair of aces with a club in it. But I decided to fold and we go to the next hand. Next hand, I get King Jack suited from the small blind, low jack, high jack, and button limp. I decide to squeeze to $33. And again, not my favorite play here. I think from the small blind, I would rather just complete the big blind and see a flop. From the big blind, I would totally be in favor of squeezing because I wouldn't take the risk of the big blind waking up with a really good hand. But from the small blind, I really rather just calling the big blind and seeing a flop. But I decided to raise 33, which is not bad. Everybody folds and I win the hand. Next hand, I'm in the small blind with pocket nines, one limper, cutoff raises to 15. I don't know much about this player. On future hands, I will do, and if I could come back in time, I would decide to 3-bet him, because I believe his range is wider than, than a regular open raise range in 1-3. But here, I decided to flat 9s from the small blind, which is okay as well. Limper calls as well, so 3 players see the flop. The flop comes ace, 7, deuce, rainbow. Any ace high type of hand is beating me down. I check. They all check back. Third comes a 6. Now I believe most of the times I'm winning. And I'm gonna bet to protect my equity. I bet $30, two thirds of the pot, which is what I recommend you to do. When you have a hand you think you're most likely winning, you should bet to protect your equity, especially when you have a hand that is fragile against many hands, like King Queen, King Jack, King 10. All those hands have six outs against nines. Everybody folds and I win the hand. Next hand, I'm in the hijack with pocket eights. Everybody folds to me. I open raise to 12, only big blind call. The flop comes eight, five, king with two clubs. I have middle set, he checks to me, and I see bet to 11, big blind calls, and now the turn is a pretty interesting card, because this board is really wet, big blind has a lot of flush draw type of hands in his range, plus some gut shots as well, he checks, Press your stack, please. effective stack is around 300, so we're playing pretty deep, and if he has a flush draw, or a gut shot flush draw, I cannot allow him to call profitably against a set, because if he hits his flush draw, most likely, I will call for a bet, so I decided to size up a little bigger than usual. I bet 45, around a pot size bet. If he has a flush draw or a good shot flush draw, he will tend to call here, but it will not be the right price for him to call, so that's what I do so big. 
He thinks for a long time and unfortunately decides to fold and I win the hand. Next hand I get ace-king offsuit from the cutoff. Hijack raises to 15. I'm gonna 3-bet here. I 3-bet to $48. Everybody folds to him and he quickly 4-bets to 148. It's really rare to see a 4-bet in this game. Usually the player who does that is gonna be pretty value heavy, such as aces, kings, queens, jacks, ace king. He has like 110 left. I thought about folding, but ace king is such a good hand that I think it's okay to call 100 for a pot that has 200. And in case I hit an ace or a king, I'm gonna just go for it in position. So I call the $100 more. We go heads up to the flop, which is one that I miss it completely. He goes all in for 107 and ace king is just not good enough for me to call. That's a really exploitative play, okay? Because if you're playing against someone that you believe that the person is playing optimally, you should just go all in because SPR is pretty small. So I'm pretty much committed to this pot. And I'm beating hands like ace-queen suited and I'm tying with hands like ace-king. But I decided to fold and I hope it was the correct play, but honestly, I will never know because it didn't show. I buy him for 75 more, losing around $75. Next hand, I get King Queen suited from the under the gun. My image at this table is from a pretty loose guy, just for the record. I raise to 15, under the gun calls 15, low jack calls as well. Then the small blind re-raises to $90. I have no big information about the small blind. He is a young guy, little older than me. He seems to be a good player, but that's never a really reliable information because there's a lot of players that just seem to be good but are really bad. Against good players, a raise from under the gun and two people flatting, he should have a reasonably wide range re-raising from the small blind because he, re he would represent a lot of strength and there are $48 of that money in the pot. But I don't know his level to imagine what type of range he would do that here. But King Queen suited, I believe is a pretty easy call in position. We have a hands that develop really well post flop. So that's what I do, I call. And then under the gun plus one goes snap all in with 168. And that does allow the small blind to go all in as well. Cause 15 to $90 is a rate of $75 and 90 to $168 is a rate from $78, which is bigger than 75. So it doesn't kill the action. I'm hopeful for a small blind to just call because then I would be in a really easy spot of calling and see a flopping position against him, which is not what happens. You have no idea what I have, man. <laughs> I just hate this spot so bad. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Pretty tough spot to be in. I don't have a great clue of what range he would play this way. If I think he would do that with many ace-5, ace-4, ace-3, ace-2 suited, pocket pairs, and even hands like king-jack suited, or even king-10 suited, that's a clear call for me. But I don't know how tight he is. And most of the times in the 1-3 game, people are really tight, especially 3-betting from the small blind. So pretty close decision for me. I gotta call 310 for a pot that has 676. I believe my range against under the gun plus one is pretty close to even with king queen suited. But against the small blind, I believe in average, I will be behind with king queen suited. But still is a 310 call for 676 spot. So I should have average around 32% equity. So this call is profitable. I was kind of tilted and impatient but I really try to not let that affect my game. So I decided to be patient, even though I was tilted and fold. Afterwards, the under the gun plus one had ace king suited. So he was way ahead of me. The board came pretty good for me. I would beat ace king, but that's irrelevant in terms of my decision preflop. And the small blind had king 10 suited. So I was beating him. And if I saw the cards, the call would be the best option. So I didn't make the best decision at least thinking about the hands that he had in that particular spot. King Queen suited is really in the edge of what I might call or fold. If I had King Jack suited, I would fold here. And if I had Ace Queen suited, for example, I would call easily. So King Queen suited is really, really the edge of my decision between calling or folding. And unfortunately, I didn't make the best decision this time and it happens. I buy him for $50 more, losing a little more than $100. Next hand I get ace-jack offsuit from the cutoff. One limper before me, I raise to 15. Small blind and limper call, so three players see the flop. Flop comes ace-eight-six rainbow. I have top pair. They check to me, 
Most likely I'm winning this hand. I see bet $20. Both players call. Turns a five, seven, nine, and ace five would get there, but I still believe I'm winning. They check to me again, and I bet $50. Only low jack calls this time. I believe if he was beating me, he would tend to check raise here instead of just calling. Especially because any 7 would have open-ended and there are plenty of gut shots in this board. River comes another 8 and now he decides to do something odd, which is leading out $75. I felt bad in this lead. I just feel like everything is going wrong today. How much is it? 70. But still, 75 for a pot that has 285. I need to be right a little more than 20% of the time, so this call is profitable. So I call. He shows ace 9, ace jack is good, and we win the hand. I was tilted, my day has been pretty stressful, and I wasn't thinking I was playing my A game, so I decided to stop for today. That's something I really advise you guys to do. If you guys are not in a good state of mind, and that would mean that you won't play your A game, I really advise you to just stop playing and play poker another day, because patience and emotional control is really important for you to play your A game. And I wasn't even close to being in that state of mind, so I decided to stop, go home, calm down, chill a little bit, and play another day when I was in a better state of mind. Man, I'm kind of stressed. Uh, I decided to come walking home, it's like a 50 minute walk and I need to relax a little bit and man I have to tell you that when I started this vlogging thing I knew that it wouldn't be easy you know like I knew that there would be a lot of challenges ahead of me that I didn't know what those challenges would be but I knew that they would exist but man you have no idea how hard it is to just want to record your own hands wherever you play because there are some casinos some no like the majority of it like 90 95 percent of it don't allow so if they get you they're gonna tell you stop recording but in the end that's bad for everybody like that's bad for me that's bad for them and that's bad for you because you don't get access to the content that i want to do that no one is bothered by it like 99.9% .9 of the times who tell me to stop recording are the staff of the casino are not the people like and when it's the people worst case scenario they say oh I don't want to be on your vlog okay okay it's fine man most people are not haters from YouTube like some of you that want to fuck people around you know like the guy's recording let him record like fuck the guy you know you, do, you don't have to care about me and it's fine just let me do my thing and this doesn't happen you know people don't let me do my thing unfortunately and it ends up it's counterproductive for everybody for everybody and that just like it's so fucking stressful you know like it's so fucking stressful to see a dumbass thing happening in the uh, for the vloggers you know and i don't see no vloggers talking about that but that's what i live i live a uh, continuous stress when i get to a new place and this place doesn't allow me to record in florida it was so fucking bad you know like i got to i got to hard rock man i just couldn't record at hard rock hard rock is a great casino beautiful but they treat you like they don't care about you that's the truth you know this is just the truth like looks like they have so many players that they have the power to say i don't care about one or two guys that are not gonna come here anymore and man this is just like stressful and that's why i say so many good things about resort world because they are great they are amazing they are amazing staff they are smart they understand that vloggers are important to them like to bring people out and resort world is just the best casino uh the best poker room in vegas that i found and i'm being honest to you uh if you come to vegas make sure to check resort world make sure to check uh bellagio and man there are, are other goods but some of them are just dumb you know they don't realize how how they are making a bad decision for themselves by not let not allowing me to record and that's what i wanted to share with you uh if you disagree with me uh it's fine you know but that's that's how i think that's how i see the world like i'm not bothering no one i'm just doing my thing and in the end they are bothering me defending 
no one you know because no one cares about this like they are the only ones who have to say oh you can't record here okay fuck you you, you know like uh, man it's just so stressful and i needed to share with you that and that's gonna be the end of the episode today i hope you guys enjoyed if you did hit the like subscribe to the channel and see you next time